of discussion today is the whispers of shaitan. And it's an interesting and important discussion. Um, so hopefully I, I pray to, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps me to be able to say that which is um, necessary, appropriate, and would be beneficial for myself and all of us, inshaAllah ta'ala. Uh, so we'll get into it, inshaAllah. Allah says in the Quran, uh, in regards to the whispers of the shaitan, that if an evil whisper from shaitan tries to turn you away, then seek refuge in Allah. Verily, he is the all here, the all knowing. In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentions that Allah has forgiven for my ummah that which is whispered to, to them and which crosses their mind, so long as they do not act upon it or speak of it. And so, uh, we understand from this that, uh, that uh, whispers are something that are going to be uh, our intrusive thoughts. And so, uh, we're going to get into that, inshallah. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word waswasa for a whisper. Right? And um, a surah that many of us are familiar with, Surah Al-Nas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي سُدُورِ النَّاسِ We'll get to Surah Al-Nas. But over there we learn about the waswasa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُوَسْوِسُ uh, as a verb. For those of you that are students of the Arabic language, uh, you might recognize that it's a present and future tense verb. Right? So what is a waswasa? Right? Waswasa consists of intrusive thoughts that cause cognitive dissonance. Right? Um, which is mental distress due to contradictory beliefs, values, or thoughts. Right? That uh, a person has a certain understanding about something. And they feel an effect or they feel something against that. They're being pushed towards something other than that. So they get challenged in their mind as to how to deal with the matter. Uh, they understand something to be haram or they understand something to be disliked. Uh, they believe that. But at the same time, they have the challenge of, of trying to uphold them. Um, and possesses a risk uh, to uh, persons, not only to their spiritual state, but also to their psycholo uh, psychological state. In, in Islam, we understand that the waswasa can either come from the nafs, which in English translates as the inner self or soul, or can, can come from an external force, like the shaitan or another human being. Uh, a person experiencing waswasa does not hear shaitan's voices in their mind, but experiences thoughts that are very distressing to himself or herself. So, the idea of a, of a waswasa, again, is that a waswasa can come from different sources. It is a thought, right? It is a whisper, right? Um, the whole discussion on a whisper is also very interesting, because not every whisper is bad, right? Not every whisper is bad. So we can't really say that a you know, whisper in general is negative, right? Whispers can be positive, right? Uh, the angel, we also learn about from the hadith that angels can also uh, give, a, you know, a good suggestion, can push a person towards good. That's also possible, right? A person can speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way where they are not speaking out loud, right? Uh, and they are speaking silently or they're speaking in a, in a tone which would be recognized as a whisper, right? So, that communicating between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would not be negative, that would be positive. Right? So it's not that every whisper is bad, but a whisper that constitutes as a waswasa, right? an, intrusive, an intrusive thought that actually pushes a person towards uh, something which is inappropriate, which is, not, which is not right, that would be classified as a waswasa. Right? So again, the waswasa can come either from the nafs, or it can come from uh, that's internal. And the nafs would be considered internal. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers, in the Quran we, we learn about the, the, the issue of the nafs. And while it translates as the inner self or soul, that's a, 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 a translation that also can be uh, can, can further be you know, discussed. That uh, uh, when we talk about the nafs, the nafs, um, uh, you know, the, the human being is made up of a soul. Right? That's the main element of a human, right? So the body is not the main reason that we are a human being. The soul is, right? Because when the body is formed before the soul is put in, then that body is not alive. Similarly, when the soul is extracted and there's no soul inside of a body, then that body is no longer alive. Right? So the, the life of the body and the death, death of the body is actually the soul. But when we say soul, that, that, uh, that, that's the whole soul uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that we don't have much information about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself tells us in the Qur'an. 
um, there's another word for soul, in, uh, which, which people commonly know, ruh, right? The word ruh is used, right? And uh, ruh means uh, the actual soul, right? As far as the nafs goes, the scholars have gone into discussion, and not to get into the you know, detailed discussions of this, but the nafs is looked at more negatively, right? Than, uh, than the ruh. The ruh is actually the human being. But as far as the, the, the nafs goes, that's a part of the soul. That's a part of the ruh. Right? And it's a part of the ruh, it's a part of the, the, the soul and a part of the person that in its, in its uh, initial stages is one that will try, to, uh, will try to turn a person away from that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why is that? Allah tells us in the words of Yusuf alayhi salam in Surah Yusuf that in nafsa la ammaratun bisu wa ma ubadi wa nafsi inna nafsa la ammaratun bisu illa ma rahim rabbi inna rabbi ghafuru rahim that uh, I don't free myself from my soul. Uh, Yusuf alayhi salam when he was uh, put in a circle when he was in the jail when he was in, in, in prison because of an, of an accusation that was leveled against him and uh, he was put into he was in, put into prison wrongfully and. He ended up staying in prison for a number of years, right? And uh, at the end of that, um, when it was found that he wasn't guilty, he didn't do anything. Uh, he, you know, the, when the when when the messenger came to, so uh, the story goes that uh, the king sends for Yusuf Ali Salam because of an interpretation of a dream that he gives. And so when the messenger comes to Yusuf Ali Salam and says, you know, the king's calling you, he said, no, I'm not going to come because first you have to clear my name up. So the me- messenger at this moment is calling uh, is. is Asked, uh, telling him, Yusuf alayhi salam that the king's calling you because of the interpretation. So he says, Bef- interpretation aside, I-, I want to make sure that my ne- name is cleared up. So he goes back to the king and says he's refusing to come until the case is dealt with. And so the case is dealt with. And he understood that he didn't do anything wrong. And that's when he uh, mentions these words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala men- you know, quotes these words of Yusuf alayhi salam and tells us that uh, the nafs, which is a part of the human being, and there's no exact... Um, definition or exact uh, translation, uh, but the loose translation that's like mentioned over here, the inner self or the soul, right? That in the nafs al amaratun bisu. Indeed, that the soul, indeed, this nafs, is 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 a part of the human that orders a person towards evil. So scholars have gone into the discussion. What does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, the nafs is is one that likes pleasure, right? Likes likes that which which is comfortable for itself. Like likes its own comfort, and generally comforts are found, right? In, in those things that are not uh, that are go against the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it will be quick to do that like you know staying asleep rather than waking up for fajr for example right? that a person would prefer to stay asleep than wake up right? it's easier to be asleep it's more comfortable to be sleeping so that's where the nafs would give uh, a whisper to the person that's ah, alright don't worry you know? so we'll get into that discussion as well inshallah right? so just to clarify nafs, uh, the waswasa of the nafs and then what's what's from an external source, right? Uh, from from an external uh, source, like shaitan, uh, or from another human being. Right? So that's what's what's. Um, so actually, before I get that, you know, um, there's another discussion, that, and I'm not going to get into it at all. Uh, it's known uh, as what's what's al qahili, uh, which in English is generally translated as obsess- obsessive compulsive disorder, right? Obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, it's a type of disorder where a person uh, feels that they have to do something, right? uh, and, 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 and that's continuously plays in their mind. It's actually such a discussion that um, scholars have actually written entire books on it, um, and uh, it really gen- a lot of times refers. It's it, it's 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 found or or understood becomes manifest in areas of the deen, <laughs> right? Uh, tahara is one of those areas, right? And one of those issues that a person could become obsessed with, right? Obs- uh, develop an obsessive compulsive disorder, right? That, uh, oh, um, you know, for, for, me- for boys, for example, it could be drops of urine after, after using the washroom, right? That it could become a case that, uh, you know, am I clean? Is it, did, did, did another drop come out? Um, you, know, did, you know, it could it go into the discussion of Tahara. Imam Ibn Qayyim and Jawziya and Alama Suyuti, rahimahullah, have written books on this, right? On this, and, and they've only discussed waswasa in this regard. Um, you know, and so that uh, a person gets, you know, uh, continuous confusion about, uh, you know, issues related to tahara or related to the deen. Um, you know, that, uh, for example, did I do my niyyah properly before I started my salah? Uh, what if I, I didn't, uh, uh, I, I didn't re- raise my hands properly? 
right? Did my salah even start? Did my salah even count? Right? They, they go through a, a salah and then they break their salah and they repeat their salah and they break their salah and they repeat their salah. They do that with wudu. I saw an individual, uh, I'm not sure if he's still alive, he was elder, so uh, yeah, I'd seen him, uh, you know, that he would have this issue with wudu. Start doing wudu, right? And then it stop. He'd, he'd actually shake like this, right? No, I haven't started properly. Then try to do the knee again, start gargling, and then, you know, some, uh, sometimes it would take him three, four, five instances to do his wudu. Then he would come for salah, and then the same thing. Start his salah, and then stand still, start again, and, then, and like that. And this is an obsessive compulsive disorder. Though most of our scholars have identified it in issues of tahara and ibadah, it could be identified in other places as well. And it's a discussion, it's a disorder, it's, a, it's, it's considered a, 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 a type of mental, uh, a mental health issue that has to be dealt with by a professional. Uh, that's something that, uh, again, is not our, our topic of discussion here. Um, so what's the issue with, with waswasa? Right? Um, first of all, we have to understand that waswasas are normal. Right? Uh, within the Islamic tradition, waswasa is considered a natural human phenomenon. Everyone experiences it to some degree at some point in their life. It's going to be the case. The nafs is going to give you some waswasa. Shaitan is going to give you some waswasa. Right? As far as the, the human issue, we'll get to that. Right? But common examples of everyday waswasa can include jealousy. Right? That um, Jealousy is, is, is a topic that a lot of people don't realize that it's part of, part of being human, right? That there will be some sense of jealousy, right? There's a, um, a jealousy which is, uh, which is natural. It's not right, but it's natural, right? In the sense that a person sees something and like it, they want to have it instead of that person, right? That's, it's possible that they see a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And that's why they have to control themselves. And so a jealous thought that comes in, a thought of jealousy that comes in, a person has a responsibility to control that. So they might feel like, oh man, like, that's bad. Why did I even think like that? But that was natural. Right? It was natural, normal, that that kind of thought might come in. Right? Uh, like intrusive thoughts about, a, about something a person wants but can't have. Right? That, that would be a, a waswas of jealousy. Lust. Right? Having intrusive thoughts about desiring someone that a person can't be with. Right? Or doubts about major life decisions and con- conflicting thoughts about doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing? Thoughts keep coming to the brain. Right? The person thinks about it. Right? So these are uh, waswasas. Uh, international studies, and uh, you know, again, uh, that's just an international study. Estimate that about 94%, I would say 100%, right? <laughs> of the uh, of, of, of human population, because this is part of being human. Right? This is part of being human that a person is going to get waswasas. So since mild and occasional intrusive thoughts are part of the normal human experience, general waswasa must be differentiated by the type of waswasa which is regarded as a mental illness. Right? So keep that in mind. Right? That there's a difference between the two. Our discussion is not about the mental health issue. I mentioned a little bit about that. That's known as waswasa al-fahi. Uh, waswasa that is excessive or overwhelmingly beyond the average human experience is called waswasa al-qahiri. Qahiri means overpowering. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned in the Quran, uh, Quran wa huwa al ibadi. Right? He's, he, he is mighty over his servants. Right? So it's such a, such a, a strong uh, you know, thought. It's so overwhelming, so compulsive. That's why they call it obsessive compulsive disorder. Right? It's, it makes a person obsessed. Right? And it's very challenging for that individual. So it can't be treated in a normal manner. Right? Exactly. Um, so... We'll just leave it to a side right now. Nafs versus shaitan. Right? So we learned that there was issue of the internal and the external. Waswasas can come from an internal sense, from an internal source like the nafs, and come from an external source. Uh, so when it comes to the waswasas, waswasas that come from the shaitan make a sin appear attractive until the Muslim falls into it. If the shaitan is unable to achieve that, he moves on to another sin, and if that does not work, he moves on to a third and so on. Right? So how do you know a thought is from, how do you know a waswasa is from the nafs, or how do you know a waswasa is from the shaitan? Right? Uh, so that's what the discussion is. Right? So a waswasa that comes from the shaitan, one of the ways that scholars define it and describe it, is that shaitan is such that he will make an attempt, and he'll try to put a plant of thought into you. Right? And then he'll see if you fall prey to that. Right? Um, he'll try to affect, incite the nafs. Right? That's one area that he'll try to do. He'll try to incite the nafs. Right? 
uh, or he'll try to engage you in a sin. And if that doesn't work, he'll try something else. And if that doesn't work, he'll try something else. Right? Meaning that he's, he's, he, he won't stick to the one thing. Right? He does not care about making the Muslim fall into a particular sin. Rather, what he cares about is making the, the Muslim disobey his Lord. And it is all the same to him whether he makes him do something that is forbidden or amid something that is obligatory. For all of it is a sin and disobedience. Right? That's the way he's going to work. And that doesn't mean that he doesn't link them together. He'll try to, right? Uh, you know, he'll try to uh, not only make a person miss their salah, but also think, become depressed over that, and also think that it's, you know, I'm, I'm better off doing this. I did this anyway, so I might as well do this as well, right? And he'll try to connect that together, right? For that individual, he'll plant these type of thoughts. He'll make a person feel like that, right? Uh, in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions many ayat. Why well, I have a list of them that I'm supposed to discuss when it comes to the shaitan. But what, we'll, we'll just get to, to this point, right? You know, as for the waswasa that comes from the nafs, it is what, what urges that person to commit a specific sin and repeatedly seeks to make him do it. Like I said, the nafs desires comfort. That's the way the nafs works. Right? It desires comfort. So it will, you know, like, uh, maybe an easy, like a, an easy example to understand the waswasa of the nafs is sleeping during fajr time. Right? Shaitan might incite that, might help the nafs in that. He knows that, okay, you know, nafs will like to sleep rather than wake up and pray fajr. Right? So the shaitan will come up with all sorts of you know, ideas to make sure that, that that is implanted in the nafs. Oh, it's really cold outside. Do you really want to get out of your, 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 your bed? Like it's so nice and comfortable in your bed. Like, okay, you know what? You pray every single day. What happens is, what's the big deal if you don't pray today? Right? Is it really going to hurt Allah if you don't pray today? Like, oh, come on, you're so tired. You, know? you came back late last night. Right? It's, it's difficult. Everybody should understand that. Even Allah would understand that. Right? So these are thoughts that will come. And the nafs will be like, yeah, you know, it's so, so comfortable in this. Let's just keep it to that. Right? So, you know, the nafs will, 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 will want, want to sleep. It doesn't care about, uh, it doesn't care about the sin. Right? The sin aspect of it, no, it's just comfort. I, I just want to sleep. Right? And shaitan will, you know, use the other things to try and make sure that happens. Right? So, uh, that's uh, nafs versus shaitan. Right? So, a little bit on, uh, on the... Right. Um, just to point out, uh, let me just see what, what I have here. Right. Okay, so we'll do this first. The Kathir Rahimahullah says that the ayah of the Quran is really uh, the ayah where uh, uh, whether we show you what is within yourselves or conceal it, Allah will bring you to, uh, to account to it. Right? Um, uh, he, he mentioned the interpretative mean, uh, interpretation means that. Even if he brings you to account and questions you, he will not punish you except for that which a person is able to ward off. As for that which he cannot ward off, such as the waswasas of the nafs, no one is accountable for that. Meaning that he's not, it, not, not to say that he can't ward off a nafs, uh, waswasa of the nafs, it means that he can't control it. It's just going to happen. Right? That's going to happen. That which, no one is accountable for that which is, um, uh, uh, um, for, for that which is not in their control. Right? That which is not in their control is not something that a person is uh, going to be, uh, be questioned about. But uh, hating evil waswasa is part of faith. Right? To understand that that's part of us. Right? That's, that's part of the, 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 the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Right? So uh, that's, uh, that's a little bit in regards to that. Right? So uh, one of the, the important discussions that we have to have is in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about the shaitan, right? And the waswasas that come from the shaitan. So, there we go, I'm just going to pull up a, a document that I have. Uh, let's see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a lot about the shaitan. I hope this is the one. Can I see it? Yes. Right, so these are all ayat that talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about shaitan, right? Uh, the first is Surah Al-Nas. And in Surah Al-Nas, I'll leave that even though it's because it's on the, on the slide itself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in multiple places about understanding the shaitan. Right? So we've talked a little bit about the nafs and the shaitan. We talked about the nafs being internal and the waswasa of the nafs and understanding what the desire of, of the nafs is and what kind of waswasa it's kind of, kind of bring. But now we're going on to the external force. You know, waswasa is coming from an external force uh, like the shaitan. Right? And understanding that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned multiple verses and I'm going to 
try and uh, I don't know if I'll be able to cover all of them. There's a whole list of them that we have over here that we'll try to, to cover. He's, Allah says, O children of Adam, do not let shaitan tempt you as he removed your parents from paradise, stripping them of their clothing to show them their private parts. Indeed, he sees you and he and his, uh, uh, he and his tribes from where you do not see them. Indeed, we have made the devils allies to those who do not believe. Right, so, uh, understanding when Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi, alayhi salam, when they were in Jannah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed them not to eat from, from a particular tree. Um, again, we don't know which tree that is, so we don't identify a particular tree. Uh, uh, even though some people have tried to say it's a particular type of tree. Um, and they eat from that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it that their aura, their aura was concealed naturally by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they ate from that, then their aura became exposed and out of shame they started to cover themselves. Right? And that was the impact of shaitan, you know, trying to plant a waswasa. So shaitan, his waswasa can be so strong. A shaitan's waswasa can be so strong that it could have impacted a person. Now, the whole discussion, how could shaitan, imp- you know, uh, do, give a waswasa to uh, Adam alayhi salam and as a prophet of Allah and uh, Hawa alayhi salam, scholars have gone into this discussion, right? That number one, it was in Jannah, it wasn't on this earth. So it's not, a, it's not the same it's not the same place. This was meant as something totally different. That, that doesn't apply, you know, the idea that shaitan can influence, uh, can he or can he not influence uh, a prophet. Our belief as, as, as Muslims is that a shaitan can never influence a prophet. Right? But that's on this earth. As far as what happened in, in Jannah, that was a specific incident that Allah had kept for Jannah. That was supposed to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already was aware of that. Right? That, was going to, that, that was going to be the means of them coming to, to earth. So don't understand it in the, in, in the general rule, the general principle. Um, so anyway, that's what we understand. It could be very powerful. Right? It could be a, a, a shaitanic waswasa, uh, can be very, very powerful. Iblis said, uh, do you see this one whom you have honored above me? Uh, right? Allah subhanahu, he mentioned that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That's what he, how he thought about the human being. Right? He wanted to degrade the human being. Right? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about, uh, in, in another verse, that except for Iblis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy will not go on the Iblis. He refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. And he tricked them by falsely swearing to them. Right? So, uh, he actually, Allah says in the Quran, He told them, Inni laka min al nasihin. I'm amongst the people who want to advise you to do good. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good advisor for you. Right? I'm a good advisor right? uh, for you. Right? Allah says in another verse in the Quran, and He swore by Allah to them, Indeed, I am to you from amongst the sincere advisors. Uh, 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 from the sincere advisor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another verse of the Quran that Allah told uh, 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 that when Allah Idris, uh, uh, addressed shaitan, Iblis, right? again, I'll use the word Iblis and not shaitan because I'm going to get to that, and said, you know, why did you do this? Why did you not prostrate to Adam? Right? Uh, so, said, I am better than him. Uh, uh, min nari wa min ti, min right? Um, that in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it has been decreed for him that whoever turns to him, meaning shaitan, he will misguide him and lead him to the punishment of the blaze. And in the hadith that Imam Nasa, Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, have mentioned in their, in, their, in their books, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, shaitan sat waiting for the son of Adam, or sits, waiting for the son of Adam in all his pathways. He sits for him on the path of Islam, and he said to him, become a Muslim and leave the religion of your forefathers and grandfathers. And after this temptation to become a disbeliever, there are just different ways where he takes the son of Adam into innovation, desires, and doubts. Uh, so, uh, again, the, the push is to, to make them do something, right? To push them to do, to do something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Indeed, he is to you a clear enemy. He only orders you to, do, to evil and immorality, and to say about Allah what you do not know. In another verse, Allah says, Shall I inform you upon whom the devil descends? They descend upon every sinful lion. And they will not be calling for guidance, nor be commanding to piety, nor will they guide to the truth. In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ stated that patience is from Allah and hastiness is from shaitan. This is an impact of the waswasa. The shaitan will put in this uh, intrusive thought which will be impulsive. Like, do it. Right? Come on, man. Just down. Don't, don't wait. Right? Uh, you know, it's, it's like that. Uh, shaitan threatens you with poverty and orders you to immorality. While Allah promises you forgiveness from him and bounty. And Allah is encompassing and knowing. Meaning his waswasas are going to be of this nature. They're going to be related to 
poverty. Like, oh no, if you don't do this, what's going to happen to you? Like, how are you going to? You need this, right? The idea of poverty is not something to be under, uh, to mis- be misunderstood. It's not like, oh, you're going to become homeless. That's not what he's going to. He's not going to sit in there and say, oh, uh, you're going to become homeless uh, if you don't do. It. He's going to make it whatever you he wants you to do. He's going to make that seem seem like a a need. Right? It's going to make that seem like a need. If you don't do this, you're, how you, you know, it's very difficult for you. Like, whatever the circumstance might be, whatever the context might be, right? it might be uh, you know, uh, something you want to purchase. Oh, you need that. You need that. It's something you need. If you don't, if you don't have it, it's as if you're poor. Right? It's, a, it's a state of poverty. Poverty is when a person is in need of things. So he'll make things seem like a need that a person cannot do without. Secondly, his waswasas will be related to immorality. Right? Making a person do him, uh, behave immorally. Right? So, um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the opposite of that is Allah's forgiveness. Meaning that a person will have to battle that. We're recognizing that, look, I can't do this. And I, if, I, if I have to deal with it, I have to deal with it. Right? And Allah will forgive. Right? Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant bounty. Allah will give something. Right? Allah will give to a person. Right? Uh, Sufyan Athori, rahimahullah, used to say that shaitan doesn't have a weapon against mankind like fear of poverty. Right? Like the fear of poverty. Making a person feel like they need to have this. Right? They need this kind of job. They need this kind of education. They need this kind of salary. They need this kind of lifestyle. They need this kind of appearance. They need this kind of behavior. This is what they need. Right? So, that's poverty. Right? And it's reported by, uh, by uh, that, uh, in, uh, some of the prophets said to Iblis, By what did you defeat the son of Adam? He said, at the time of anger and at the time of desire. Uh, that meaning, uh, you know, what's what's that built of anger within a person? Anger will destroy. It. The Prophet said, said, "Anger is fire from the shaitan." Right? That's what uh, uh, the, the Prophet said. Right? Uh, Allah says in a verse, "He shaitan promises them, uh, uh, promises them, and arouses desires in them, but shaitan doesn't promise them except de- delusions." Right? That's how shaitan's are, uh, shaitan's promises are. Right? In another verse, but I had no authority ex- uh, over you except in, uh, that I invited you in the day of judgment. After all of that, that, that he pushes a person toward to do it. You know, talk about salt on the wound, right? Putting salt on the wound. On the day of Qiyamah, when everybody's going to be like, where's that guy Shaitan? You know, and you know, look at all of the evil deeds. You know, people think like they can defeat Shaitan. And they get mad at Shaitan. And, you know, you know like when they go to the Jamarat, right? Where the uh, stoning of, they call it stoning of the devil, right? And, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know the obesity gets to everybody, right? Shaitan... In, in the Jamarat used to be one pillar before. One small guy. Right? Skinny little guy. Right? And then what happened? Obesity. Right? Now he's a big huge wall. That's five floors tall. Right? Because there's five floors of the Jamarat now. Right? It's five floors of the Jamarat. Right? And so people have more to throw at. Because there's so many more, there's so much more sh- shaitanic incidents happening in our world. Like people need that big of a wall. Like, ah, you know? So... And then people go there and they think, Shaitan, I finally see you. It's just a wall. It's not him, himself. Right? That's how people get mad and like, start going crazy. Like, they're, they're, they're supposed to throw a pebble and start flicking. Oh, like, Come here, Shaitan. Right? And then some people get crazy. Right? One brother told me uh, that, that he saw a guy throw a wheelchair at that wall. <laughs> Shaitan, you need this. I'm going to disable you. Okay. Uh, and, and other people throw their slippers, and you know, so uh, that's, uh, and they think that that's shaitan, and they're like getting uh, back at him for all these years. All these years you got to me. Now I'm gonna get back at you, shaitan. Right? Uh, one brother even told me that when it was, when it was the pillar, he saw some guy. He jumped on the on, on the pillar and he started beating it with his fist. Right? And a stone. What's gonna happen to his fist? Like you know, his poor, poor guy probably. Uh, I hope his hand was sane afterwards, but. You know, that's what happens. People want to defeat Shaitan. So Shaitan's gonna stand up on the day of judgment and he's gonna be like, Look, 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 guys. I gotta make an announcement here. Shaitan When the matter is c- completed, he's gonna stand up and make an announcement. In Allah Allah had promised you and his promises are true. Look, I also made promises to you, but I'm going against my promise. <laughs> like over there in Qiyamah on the day of judgment, like could you do it in this world? Like while you're whispering, like you know what? Look, I'm making a promise, but the promise is false. Don't bother with it. But he's going to stand up on the day of judgment, and he's going to make this announcement, right? And you have nothing you can hold against me except that I just invited you. You answered my my, my da'wah. 
Right? You answered my, my, my call. Right? Um, so don't blame me, blame yourselves. Right? I'm not going to call out to you, you can't call out to me. Right? That's, that's shaitan. Right? Um, so there's many other verses, and again, like I said, uh, there's much more that can be discussed, but we'll get back into our PowerPoint, otherwise it'll get really lengthy. Right? So in, the, uh, in this uh, Surah Al-Nas, I'm sure all of us know the, the Arabic for Surah Al-Nas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it. You know what <coughs> is very interesting, and I don't have the time to go into it, is why is this the last surah of the Qur'an? Right? Why is this the last surah of the Qur'an? And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the Qur'an on. Why is this the last message? It's a very beautiful, profound message, and I don't have the time to go into it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this surah, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of mankind. Malik uh, nas the king of mankind. Ilahin nas the God of mankind. مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ from the evil of the whisperer who withdraws when Allah's name is pronounced. <laughs> the one who whispers into the hearts of people. From among the jinn or mankind. So over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, mentioned, first of all, the, the Mufassirin go into it, that three of Allah's names are used to seek protection against one whisper. Three of Allah's names are used to seek protection against one whisper. Because that how, that's how strong this whisper could be. We need Allah's assistance to defeat these whispers. Right? We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help to defeat the whispers of shaitan. And the shaitan, you know, Allah says, Allah di fi sudurin nas. He whispers into the chest of mankind, right? uh, into the hearts of the people. And then Allah says that waswas al khannas, the whisper who withdraws. Allah calls him the whisperer with Brahim. He tries to put a whisper, puts that intrusive thought in. And then he lets go. When does that happen? When a person remembers Allah. Then that impacts me. Can't. And lets go of it for a moment. Wait till a person becomes ghafil again, heedless. Puts that thought in again. As often as that person is heedless, the more thoughts that they're going to come into that person's heart. And the, challenging is, the challenge is going to be to try and deal with those thoughts. And where do those thoughts come from? Minal jinnati wa nas. Right? From the jinn. And also from the human. So over here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these intrusive thoughts, these waswasas can come from shaitans who are from the jinn or from, from the human. Uh, right? So the human shaitan. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِينَ عَدُوًا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا لَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُهُ فَذَرْهُمُ مَا يَفْتَرُونَ And so we have appointed for every prophet enemies. Shayateen, devils amongst, uh, from amongst the mankind and the jinn, inspiring one another with adorned speech as a delusion, right? uh, as, uh, or by, as a way of deception. Right? That this was sh- the, the, what the shayateen and, and jinn would do to the prophet, right? that they would try to, uh, they, would, uh, they would inspire one another. Right? Like I talked about the shaitan inspiring the nafs to, to, to send waswasas to the person. Right? And uh, um, in a hadith which Imam Musnad rahmatullahi alayhi mentions, uh, records, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, um, uh, O Abu Dhar, seek refuge with Allah from the devils of mankind and the jinn. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu asked him, uh, Are there human devils as well? He replied, Yes. The human shaitan. Right? So the human shaitan is a challenge for the, for the, for, for the person. Right? I didn't have a chance to, to go into it entirely. But what's the difference between the human and the jinn shaitan? Right? A shaitan, first of all, the word shaitan comes from the word shaitana, which means far away. Far away from all forms of righteousness. Right? The desire of the shaitan is to, uh, is to take a person away from righteousness. Anybody that takes a person away from righteousness is going to be a shaitan. Because that's the, what the shaitan's job is. Right? A human shaitan is more difficult than a, uh, than a jinn shaitan. Why? Because a human is the same species. Knows the person well. Has a relationship. There's a greater, there's a bond. <coughs> Right? Between, the hum- between humans. There's an understanding between humans. There's an ability to influence in a more, uh, you know, in, 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 a, in a stronger manner. Right? Shaitan's job, shaitan will have to, like we learned, shaitan will, you know, the iblis, the jinn shaitan, they'll give a waswasa and then they'll, they'll see that doesn't work. Right? And then they'll move on to another. But when it comes to the human, the human can be very compelling. Right? Can make, can force, can really push a person to do something. Make a person do something that they don't want to do. Right? That's where the human shaitan is different from the jinn shaitan. It's more stru- powerful. And that's why the scholars even point out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Nas 
ends off by saying min al-jinnati wal nas. He mentions the jinn first, then the the the, the human last. Right? Amongst that, when talking about the waswasa, mentions the human last. Uh, so really, it really comes down to understanding the people that you deal with, right? the people that you are acquainted with, or the people you might classify as friends, people who you don't know, people who you you know, no, they're, they're just strangers. They're not even people that you, you, you deal with or ever know. Right? Really, it comes to that there are three, three types of friendship. People who you do not know, companions and acquaintance. Right? Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the issue is that people don't understand who their friends are. That's a big issue. People don't know who their friends are. So they assume people to be their friends and they're not their friends. Right? They don't know who their friends actually are and that's the challenge for the person. When they don't know, well, who is a friend? Right? And that's a, another discussion on its own. But a friend is somebody who is influential. A person who will, they be, they will influence them. Right? Uh, you know, so when there's a person who you don't know, they could have a sort of, you know, you, you, you might just come across them some, at some point in your life. But that's not a person that's going to be classified as a friend. An acquaintance is somebody that you are acquainted with. Right? That, that's somebody that you come across more frequently. But a friend is somebody who actually affects you. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, a man is considered by Allah to be on the, uh, uh, the, the, um, a person is on the religion of their friend. Al-mar'u ala deeni khalil. Every person is on the, friend, uh, on the religion of their friend. You can claim, we can claim that my religion is Islam. But really in the sight of Allah, your, uh, your religion is really what you practice, what you value. And that's based on who you, who you accompany, right? who you, who, who's around you, who, those that influence you. That's what you're going to do. You could say that stealing is haram. A person might say, let's not say you. A person might say stealing is haram and know that stealing is haram. But their friends are, are taking something. Right? They get together. They see there's an expensive item. They're like, man, that guy doesn't know. Right? His locker is open. Right? Or his bag is open. It's taken. Whatever. Right? We'll do it. Right? You know? Pornography is haram. Watching pornography is haram. A person might know that. But friends are like, man, come on. It's just it's simple. It's just a movie. Just got some scenes in there, right? It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Come on, you know, you can just look down at your popcorn when it's going on, right? And you know that, you know, or you know, uh, I remember one of Mufti Meng's talks. He mentions an uh, interesting story, which is actually not a good story, but it's nevertheless that there was friends and they got together and they decided to want to watch pornography, and so one of the friends decided to put, you know, to purchase an account. And said, you know what? I'll get it and I'll forward it to everybody. And uh, long story short, this guy had had a subscription, and he ended up passing away. And because of the subscription, the 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 and he had an automatic forward. Right? He had an automatic forward. So as soon as he would get this message, it would automatically be forwarded to others. And so he passed away, and the subscription was still active. And so even after he died, the 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 whatever, however the pornography comes, it would come to him, like with videos or messages, or I don't know. Right? They would come to, to, to this guy's account, and then they would automatically be forwarded to these other people, his friends' accounts, and he's committing sin, even after dying. After dying, he's still committing sins. And that's the impact of friends. Imagine how he's going to curse those friends on the day of Qiyam. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there's going to be a guy who's going to stand up on the day of judgment, right? and he's going to curse his friend. Right? In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a man, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, that he invited, he invited the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to his house. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and, uh, you know, uh, he, he invited him to Allah. Right? And so the man, out of courtesy, uh, uh, that this was my, this is my guest, he, he <coughs> accepted and said the kalim. And he had a friend, Umayyah bin Khalif. And Umayyah bin Khalif wasn't around at that time. And when he came back, he was on a trade, trading journey because in those days that was common and he didn't know when he was going to come back. And so when he came back, people told him, you know your friend? You know your buddy? You know, your yard, right? That guy, you know? Uh, he, you know what he did? He said, the kalima, he's not. And Umayyah bin Khalif was a staunch enemy of Islam. So he went to him and said, you, you did this? I'm not gonna, me, we're not, we're, we're not friends. You, you, I'm not going to talk to you until you don't go and spit on the... Oh, sorry, he said, I'm, you know, we're not friends anymore. He said, look, I just did this out of courtesy. I did this out of respect. He was my guest. He asked me to say it. I said it so that, you know, I invited him to my house. He said, he asked me to say this. I just said it. I didn't mean it, etc., etc. You know, tried to make the excuses. Uh, and, and he said, no, I don't believe you until you don't go and spit in the face of, uh, in the, face of the Prophet Sallallahu So he went and spat to try and prove his friendship. And on the day of Qiyamah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, he's going, to, he's going to stand up and he's going to be eating his fingers. 
been eating them because of this, the disgust. Like, what did I do? Ya wailata laita ni lam attakhir fulan al khalila laqad adallani ali dhikri ba'da izjani wa kan shaytan ulil insani khalula Oh man, my destruction. What did I do? I wish I'd never made that person my friend. Indeed, he misguided me after his guidance came to me. In the Quran, Allah says that الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٌ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقُونَ That on the day of judgment, all friends are going to be enemies. Except for those whose friendships are based on truthfulness, righteousness. So, really, who is a friend? The five qualities to look for in a friend. The idea is that things are understood from their opposites. So, you have a lot of acquaintances, or you have a lot of friends, or you have a lot of... You're a follower of people. Like, it's sickening. What a word, right? You're only a follower <coughs> of, of the Prophet, right? You don't follow anybody else, right? You don't do itiba' of anybody. Those of you that have done authority of the sunnah, right? Should know what the difference between ita'ah and ittiba' means. Right? Allah uses both of those words. Why does he use ita'ah? Why does he use ittiba'? What do they mean? What, how serious are they? Right? So things are understood from their opposites. Understand that you might n- know a lot of people, whether it's through social media, whether it's through school, whether it's through work, whether it's through other means, mediums. You really want to look at the, the, the five qualities. That Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi mentions. He says, there's five qualities to look for in a friend. Number one, intelligence. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu said, do not be in the company of an ignorant friend. Beware of him and let him beware of you. How often an ignorant man has brought this destruction, it's supposed to be destruction here, to a, man, to a forbearing man who has befriended him. A man is likened with another person, so a person, not a man meaning a person. A person is like with another person. When a person walks with him, when that person walks with him, like the similarity of one shoe to another, when it is set, set opposite to it. A thing has patterns and resemblance from other things. Meaning that's like you would see two shoes and you would say, that's a pair of shoes. That's the, way, that's the way people are seen. Whoever you hang around with, that's the way you're going to be seen. People are, you know, aren't going to differentiate you. So make, that, make sure that you have, and you look at the intelligence. Like you have, you know, you're followers of people on social media. You have no clue about their intelligence. Right? You don't know who they are, what they are. Right? You have no dealings with them. Right? Uh, Good character, right? Do not be a companion of a person who has bad character, whose character is bad. He, is, he who is unable to control himself when he is angry and is excited when he, when he desires something. Uh, gathered together the traits of good character in his will, which he gave to his son at the time of death. He said in, in that will, Dear son, when you want a companion of a person, be the companion of him who will preserve you when you employ him in your service, will adorn you when you, if you are his companion. And will supply you with uh, with victuals when you are when your victuals are not sufficient. Victuals? I think it means good care. I think so. Okay. Uh, be the companion of him who will extend his helping hand to you when you extend to him your help, your hand for help. Will reckon it a good thing if he sees something and good proceeding from you. But will stop an evil if he sees it being done by you. It's interesting that they have the, that it's put in bold, right? Understand that. That's your companion, person who stops you when you're doing something evil. Be the companion of a man who will consider you truthful when you speak, will assist you and help you if you desire anything, and will try for it and will give, it, give you way if you both dispute on any matter. Okay. The third thing is righteousness. Do not be the companion of a wicked man, a, a wicked person, a fasid, who persists in major sins. This is because he who fears God, he who fears God does not persist in major sins. And he who does not fear God may cause you mischief. Beware then of association with a wicked man, because the constant sight of wickedness and sin will remove the dislike of sin from your mind and will create the feeling that sin is something like. This is beautiful that he said. Right? You constantly see, you know, you have a friend who drinks. And you say, I don't drink, I don't care about that. But if you see him constantly drinking, or now with, with, with weed becoming, you know, legal, I would say halal. Right? Uh, you know? The easiest way to get low, to become low, is to get high, right? The a- easiest way to go to lows is to become high. Not lows, the uh, department store, right? To get down, to go down. Because whenever people get high, what happens? They go low. That's what happens. They drink because oh, I want to get rid of my problems, and then they, the problem increases because they wake up and they realize, oh, now I only have two problems, now I have three, right? Uh, so uh, that's what happens when people become high, right? They're discussing. This is such a weird situation, right? They're talking about. Our employer is going to allow people to smoke weed while they're employed. This is a discussion that's happening. Right? This is a discussion that's happening. Legally, they're permitted to smoke weed now. But they're going to get high. Right? What's going to happen to them? Right? What's going to be their state? Right? No? Uh, it's, it's crazy. Right? But anyway, it's a, the constant sight of wickedness 
If you have friends who are going to do wicked things, evil things, it doesn't matter how good you think you are, you're going to become desensitized to that evil. That's going to happen. You can't avoid that. The sinfulness of backbiting has become light to man's mind for this reason and not for the reason that man that, that, that mind cannot understand it. <coughs> Ajib, that's interesting what he says. What does he say? That the sin of backbiting has become has become light to a man's mind because people are around and backbite, everybody's backbites, and everybody's like, oh yeah, you know what? I don't like backbiting, but you know, this person is backbite, so you know, and it's my friend, and you know, and it's just it's a gathering, what am I supposed to do? Everybody's just talking, right? And everybody's just doing that. And so it's become light. Everybody says that backbiting is bad. But when it happens, nobody stops it. Right? Or very few people stop it. Or very few people engage in it. Right? So, that's what he says. He says, if people see that a Muslim jurist is wearing a gold ring or a silk cloth, they strongly oppose it because they rarely see this. Right? They think, man, this is an alim, a scholar, and he's wearing a gold ring, that's haram. Right? Whereas they do not oppose backbiting even though it is a more serious sin because they always see this. Right? So he's trying to prove that Whenever you're hanging around with people, the people you're hanging around with, the bad of them, the, fa- the fisk of them, is going to become desensitized in your eyes because that's just the nature of, of, of states. The fourth thing is absence of greed. Companionship of a, a, gre- a man greedy for the world is deadly poison. For human nature is such that the nature of one man's, man tends to resemble that of another and to imitate it. Indeed, a man's nature steals the quality of another man's nature in such a way that he is not aware of it. This is Imam Ghazali. Imam Ghazali is a great philosopher. He destroyed philosophers of his time. Right? Uh, you know, he wrote a book called The Alchemy of Happiness. Right? It really, it's, 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 it, his, his, his way of thinking is amazing. amazing. This is taken from the book Bidayatul Hidayah, right? the beginning of guidance. Right? Uh, it's, you know, what is he saying to you? Right? That is, it's the most deadly poison. A right? person who loves this world. And what happens is that uh, you know, human nature is such that it steals the, the qualities of another person's nature in a such a way that the person is not even aware of it. If you're hanging around with friends, whoever you're hanging around with, whoever you follow, right, whoever, whichever blogger you, 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 you're, you're attracted to and attached to, right, you're going to be like that. That's how you're going to become. Because that's how human nature is. Truthfulness. Do not be the companion of a liar. For he's like a mirage. He will show you that which is remote. Uh, he will show that which is remote near to you and that which is near to you. Near, near, Remote from you. Right? That's what it's going to do. It's going to make Allah's mercy seem very far. That's what shaitans are. They're called fa- far away. Shatana. Right? Because they'll make righteousness be far away. They're far away from righteousness and they'll make far, righteousness far away. Right? So. so. Alright, sorry, that was repetition. Right? So, Allah says in the Quran, right? مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ كَمَثَلِ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ اتَّخَذَتْ بَيْتَ the parable of those who take protectors other than Allah is that of a spider. The word wali is a very interesting word. Over here it's been translated. Wali is plural as awliya and that's what, uh, what, what's used. But wali can also mean friend. Right? Wali can also mean friend. Right? Wali can also mean friend. The people who take friends other than Allah is that of a spider who builds it to itself a house. But truly the flimsiest of houses is the spider's house. If they but knew. It's an interesting discussion. Allah uses the spider's web as an analogy. Right? The spider relies on that web. But how strong is that web? You know what? The, the, you know, the, the, some of the uh, you know, uh, 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 later scholars uh, the, of, of, of our contemporary age, they've gone to discussion to point out, how does a, st- a spider uh, you know, start its web? It tries to attach its string, its web, to something that it doesn't have a clue about. So it'll just shoot a web at the wall. Right? That's where it will begin. It doesn't have a clue about the strength of the wall. It's attached itself to something that it doesn't have a clue about. It's relying totally on, on this wall to build this web. But for all it could matter that this, the wall could just be pointless and it, it could actually hurt the spider. It doesn't even know. And it's relying on this house. Right? The world wide web. Right? That's where pe- most people's friends are nowadays. Right? That's where people's acquaintances and friends are. Right? They take friends from there that they use against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there will be a friend who will say, take off your hijab, right? take off your beard. And they're taking that from a person who doesn't have a clue about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. They don't know the intelligence of that individual. They don't know the good character of that individual. They don't know the righteousness of that individual. They don't know how this person is, is going to treat them like a friend. They don't see those five qualities of that individual and their friend. But they're relying on them for the information about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who's taking them away from Allah. Right? 
some of these social bloggers, right? I'm not trying to deny all social bloggers, I'm not trying to speak about, I don't want to put, you know, stereotype people, it's not right, but people, people are influenced by them, people get influenced by, 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 by social media so much, it's crazy, and that's the, the parable, right, think about it, they're relying on something that they don't even have a clue about, they don't have any, in, they don't, that person is not even their friend, you know, I was going to put up a picture, I don't have it, uh, I got it somewhere, you know, there was a picture of a, of a guy who's passed away, right? I'm not sure that girl, but it's just a cartoon. There was a cartoon drawing, right? Um, and it said, you know, the family's in, in the viewing room in a funeral home, and all the viewing room's empty. And his mother and father are crying there and saying, you know, the whole room is empty. Nobody's seen the, the coffin sitting there. And I said, but you had 500 friends on Facebook, right? Now when he's dead, nobody's coming to see him. What's the point of having those type of friends? Is that even a friend? Right? So understand for yourself. Look at the flimsiness of the world, world wide web. Right? The web. Right? It's something, is it something to rely upon? In conclusion, the best way to deal with what's what's Du'a's in still fun. We're going to come across a du'a mentioned on it. Filter your friends. For Allah's sake, be aware that you're going to be impacted by your friends. Right? Filter your social media accounts. Understand what you're doing. What's social media? What's its purpose? What's its objective? Look. I'm not saying that social media is bad, right? Anything could be good and anything can be bad depends on the way a person, uh, the, the way a person uses it and a person uh, relates to it. So, understand and be aware of shaitans, the human kind and the jinn kind, right? Understand that, you don't, don't be a shaitan yourself, first of all, right? Imam Ghazal, rahmatullah, he says that in Bidayat al towards the end, right? He says that, and of all of the stuff that was said to you doesn't make sense to you, then go find a shaitan like yourself. Because that's, you know, like, and after all of that, you just don't care. <laughs> then there's nobody that can really teach you. That's your problem. Right? And so he actually is straightforward in that. But, okay. right? but just don't be a shaitan yourself, first of all. And don't be aware that the human jinn, the human shaitan, and human jinn, I don't know about that, but uh, yeah, <laughs> the human shaitan and the jinn shaitan. Seek health, right? Seek righteousness. Understand, look for those five qualities in, in a friend. Uh, the, the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to, to seek وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ رَبِّ أَيْ يَحْضُرُونَ right? uh, that in, that, in those ayat, right before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to, to, to ward off evil in the best way possible right? ward off evil in the best way possible and, uh, and to say this dua right? very, very powerful dua رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ you can repeat it after me, inshallah. Maybe you can learn it. Rabbi, a'udhu bika, min, hamazatish, shayati, wa a'udhu bika, Rabbi, an yahdurun. That, which means, translates as, Rabbi, a'udhu bika, my Lord, I seek protection in you from the whispers of shaitan, from the shayatin, the whispers of the shayatin, and I seek refuge in you from that, they should become near, they should come near to me, or they should be around me. Right? Uh, so, this is a dua that we can try to learn. There's other duas as well, many other things that we can point out. But this was a little discussion. Inshallah, if there's some questions that brothers and sisters have, inshallah, I can try to answer it. Oh.